So in the last video, we looked at a few cases where induction fails, and sometimes it fails spectacularly. So now the question is, when does induction actually work? Now, let's see. Here's what I need to do when I use induction. I have to prove P of 0, and that's our base case. And I have to prove that for all n, P of n implies P of n plus 1. That's the uh, induction step. Okay, so uh, these are kind of my proof obligations, right? And now what I claim is that for all n, p of n is true, right? That's what I think is implied by this. Now, how can I justify that? Uh, well, let's think of a particular p of n. I mean, I'm going to pick uh, uh, p of 10, okay? Why do I think that p of n, p of 10 is true? Uh, and the reason is that uh, p of 9 implies p of 10. Okay. And I know that from the induction step, right? Because for all n, p of n implies p of n plus 1. Now, why do I believe that p of 9 is true? Well, I believe that because p of 8 implies p of 9. And I believe that because p of 7 implies p of 8. And so on. And eventually, I believe that because p of 1 implies p of 2. And p of 0 implies p of 1. And lo and behold, p of 0 is our base case. So we know that that one's true. And at that point, then I can kind of come back up here and go, yep, p of 10 must be true, right? But I have to be careful, because what about this little gap here, right? Uh, this has to be finite. If it's not finite, OK, then I don't actually get to go all the way to the top. I'm still stuck there, kind of like Achilles. You know, at t1, I'm behind. At t2, I'm behind. At t3, I'm behind. At tn, for any for any n, I'm actually behind, right? But what happens is that I can push through after an infinite number of steps, but I don't have an infinite number of steps, okay? So, so I need to be able to, to keep this section here finite. How can I do that? Well, the, the key observation is that the n's are getting smaller. So I started with n, and that's actually bigger than 9, right? And that's bigger than 8, and that's bigger than 7. And eventually, our 7 is bigger than 1, which is bigger than 0. Okay, So at every time that I need uh, the induction step, okay, I'm always going back. I'm going to a smaller number n. Okay, And, and look at this. This is actually a finite because less than is a well-ordering over the naturals. I, I told you when we were doing uh, well orderings that they would actually come back and that they were important. Well, this is, the, this is their moment to shine. I mean, this is why they're so important. Um, well orderings is what let us justify induction. Okay, So, so here we have uh, a sequence, right? I mean, this is why I believe that P of 10 is true. Oh, because it must be true for some smaller n and for some smaller n and for some smaller n. And eventually, I have to get down to 0. And that's my base case, right? So, uh, so here's what we have kind of in, in, uh, in slightly more mathematical terms. So uh, we're doing induction on some kind of a set S. S could be like the naturals, okay? But we're going to see that we can uh, do induction over kind of uh, uh, larger sets, like, for example, the set of all lists or the set of uh, binary trees or, you know, many, many interesting sets, okay? Uh, the set has to have a least element, right? or a finite subset of, quote, minimal or least, least elements, OK? So uh, for example, for the natural numbers, that's 0, OK? Uh, for binary trees, that might be a leaf, OK? That might be the empty tree, OK? It depends, you know, so sometimes it's convenient to do one, sometimes the other. For a list, it could be the empty list. Um, for, a, for a set, right, for, you know, it could be the empty set, right? That's the uh, least element, OK? And then we must have some kind of a well-ordering uh, less than. Okay, and uh, well ordering is important. Ordering is not enough. Okay, well ordering is important because that's what means that we don't take an infinite number of steps to get to the bottom. So, for example, I can do induction on the natural numbers because less than is a well ordering of the naturals, but I can't use induction on the uh, non negative rationals. Okay, and the reason I can't is because I don't have, uh, well, at least not using less than, right? Because I don't have a good well ordering. Uh, that will get me down to the bottom, get me down to zero in a finite number of steps. Okay, 
So, uh, so that's, that's crucial, right? Now, if I do that, then I have a base case, and it means that I have to prove, you know, by hand, p of x zero for any minimal element zero. For the natural numbers, all I have to do is prove p of zero. Uh, in some other cases, well, you know, I might actually have to prove p of two or three or even 12 elements to be able to get off the ground, okay? And then I have the induction step. And uh, be a little careful with the quantifiers here. This is uh, just one statement. We have for all x, this implies that. And what this basically says is that p of y is true for all y that are less than x, okay? So uh, it's just true for all smaller y. And uh, okay, so in that case, then p of x has to be true, all right? Uh, a couple of uh, kind of uh, quick observations here. Um, because that's for all y that are less than x, imagine that you're at a least element like zero, okay? This is supposed to be true for all y less than zero. Well, there aren't any, right? So it doesn't help me. So uh, in order for this actually to be true, p of zero has to be true in its own right. Because it is the case that all smaller y, p of y is true. There are no smaller y, so for all empty set is always true. Okay? So that means that p of zero has to be true in its own right, which means that I don't actually need the base case. Right? That's just there to, to make us feel more comfortable that that's the induction that's happening. Uh, the second part of observation that I want to make is that this seems quite a bit more powerful because when we were talking about mathematical induction, all we could do was assume that p of n was true for the n just before the current one, right? So p of n implies p of n plus 1, or p of n minus 1 implies n. It doesn't matter which way you go. But the point is that the previous n implies the current one. But with this phrasing, I'm actually saying that I can assume that p of n is true for all of the smaller n. So if I want to prove p of 10, I don't just get to assume that p of 9 is true. I can actually use the fact that p of 9 and p of 8 and p of 7 and p of 6 all the way to p of 0, that all of those are true. It turns out that it's actually not really more powerful because in order to get to p of 9, I needed to prove that all of those were true. But it sure is convenient, isn't it? Okay. Uh, that's sometimes called, quote, complete induction. Okay. So we have uh, mathematical induction and uh, complete induction. Uh, here's an example of actually using, quote, strong induction, right? And um, uh, complete induction also. Okay. They're, they're essentially synonyms. Uh, but here's, uh, here's an example of using it. Uh, we're going to prove that all numbers that are greater or equal to 10 can be written as the sums of 4s and 5s. All right. Okay, so here's my basis case. I'm actually choosing n equals 12, 13, 14, or 15. Okay, so 12, 13, 14, or 15, that's four base cases. Okay, so I have four base cases. This is unusual, right? Okay, now here's why I, I want that. Because uh, I want to show that the property holds for n plus 1, and it has to be greater than or equal to 15. So I'm talking about n equals 16, 17, 18, and so on. Okay, So, so our hypothesis, and I'm actually not over n minus 1, but over k is equal to n minus 3. Okay, uh, okay. so n minus 3 can be written as the sums of 4s and 5s. Why do I know that? Because I actually know that that's true for all n smaller than n plus 1. So n, n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, all of those. Okay. So, so now, uh, n plus 1 is equal to n minus 3 plus 4, okay, that's just algebra, and that n minus 3 can be written as the sums of 4s and 5s, okay? So all I did was I added one more 4, so yeah, it can also be written as the sums of 4s and 5s, okay? So, so that's that proof, and uh, notice uh, it's, kind of, it's kind of interesting because, for example, why is uh, p of 16 true, okay? Well, p of 16 is true because p of 12 implies p of 16. Now, let's look at p of 17. Well, that's true because p of 13 implies p of 17, right? Now, from p of 16, I'll get 20. From p of 17, I'll get 21, and so on, right? So there's not actually like a, like a nice chain that goes from 21 all the way down to 12. It's, it's staggered, okay? And that's also why I need all of these, quote, base cases.